question, Owen, Bryson, and Gergensons. Will they all be ready? They'll all be ready. Yeah. All good mornings, and uh, they'll be ready to go. We talked earlier this season, Don. Um, early on, it's, Owen was going through the ups and downs as a young defenseman. It seems like he's been really steady since coming back from the injury. Have you noticed anything, any common thread, any that's really made the difference for him? Yeah, just he's maturing, um, and, and he'll will continue to say that for the next few years, really. Uh, but he he learns from every different occurrence, uh, and there was no question. The start of the year, there were points, lots of points. He didn't look like himself. Um, and he's pushed through it and become better as a result. And he has looked uh, very, very good uh, in the last 20, 25 games specifically. How can playing with Rasmus, the, the responsibility, the ice time that comes along with that, how can that help him in his development as an NHL defenseman? I, I think it's going to help both of them. Uh, they both process the game at, at such a high level. They're both highly, highly skilled. And uh, they can each do things um, and they can do, do some different things when they're paired together. So I think it, uh, it's healthy uh, and exciting in the sense they, they, they'll push each other to a higher, higher level and uh, certainly hold each other to a higher standard knowing each guy knows the ability of the other. Uh, I think it's uh, very, very motivating for them uh, to be playing as a pair. And we couldn't do that without really an emergence of Yokoharu in the last 30 games. Uh, he's played the best hockey of his career. And obviously the addition of uh, Bo Byram has really helped that out uh, in the absence of, of obviously, uh, Matias Samuelson during that same span. And Zach Benson, uh, if he feels pressure, he certainly doesn't look like it. I mean, he looks like a kid at 18 who just goes out and plays the game and doesn't feel the pressure of the game. Is that what you see out of him too? And I just shake my head. How does a kid not feel pressure at 18 years old? Yeah, he's immersed in the moment and he loves the game of hockey. And and as you mentioned, Paul, we're, we're you know, 79 games in or whatever we are, 78. And, um, you know, he had a little bit of fatigue at some point during the season, but no different than every other single guy. Um, you know, it's it's natural to have that, and he just plowed right through it, right back to to being as competitive and as engaging as anybody in the league, really. Um, so yeah, it's 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 what we said in camp, why he made our team, very consistent every single day, uh, which is um, you know a, a, a probably the number one indicator of of when you're consistent, you read the game really well. When you don't read the game really well and you don't self evaluate well you can't self-correct quick. And I mean quick, like in between a shift after a goal, after a mishap or hiccup, um, he can self-correct really, really quick. Uh, that's why he's developed uh, fast as a young guy and that's why he's still very effective for us uh, this late in the season where you'd think he'd be tired. You might not agree, but even his body language, even if he makes a bad play, you don't see bad body language out of him. I know he's upset he makes a bad play, but you know, some guys are, you know, they, the, the shoulders go down and they, everything else. He, he just seems like, all right, we're playing hockey here. Let's just keep playing hockey type of thing. And I've never noticed even really bad body language out of the kid. Well, the, the body language, and I, you, know, you say body language, is usually victim's mentality. Like, oh, poor me, and how did that happen? Or, uh, but, but he's got zero of that. I mean, he, he takes full responsibility for everything. And, again, he's very self-aware. So if it was his error and his mistake... Um, he, he knows it. He probably calculated uh, knowing what what could happen, and you know the adverse thing happened. But he's he's it doesn't affect his confidence. It's not a mystery. Why did I get scored on, or why did they get a scoring chance? He knows. And um, again, that's a highly intelligent player, uh, and shocking that he's only that age. Given the the implications of, of the law Sunday, Don. And What's the challenge of getting this group refocused um, on the next one, especially the type of team you guys are facing on the road? Yeah, I mean, the challenge is obviously you, you can't have any drag, uh, negative drag, or, or be down. Um, this group of guys is, uh, is resilient, typically, and if they've proven that to that end, they, they just want to play the next game and get out on the ice. So um, that doesn't mean it's easy. Um, and certainly uh, when you look at the team you're playing and, um, you know, very deep, very talented team, extremely experienced team. Um, this is not an easy game or an easy building to play in, and I think that actually our guys know that and they're well aware of that, and I think that uh, in a day of rest uh, should help us uh, recharge a bit too. Specifically with 
the season the way it's kind of been, whether it's a stop, however you want to describe stop and go, for Tage to be on the cusp of a 30-goal season again, given everything that everyone's worked through together here, what about his game do you continue to learn or a player always wants to go to another level, whether it be doesn't always have to be goal totals. They want to take something about their game to another level. What other level has Tage gotten to here, especially in this last stretch that yeah. you've witnessed? Well, he, he's uh, they've had great chemistry, Paterka, Tuck, and Thompson, and we saw that, you know, immediately. And then I think he's he's thrived on that, and took it, taken it to another level. Um, you know, he's he's uh, much more aggressive in his play, meaning he's he's. Uh, willing to put pucks deep when need be. He's looking for shot first instead of playmaking first, and doesn't mean he's not going to make a play. He still has has that on the radar, but it's a shot first mentality. So aggressive traits we've seen him really elevate, um, and it makes it a lot easier when you know they've had some pretty instantaneous chemistry with him, Paterka and Tuck, and uh, you know I think the three of them. It's a collective there, but Tej uh, is a very committed guy. He played a lot of the year frustrated. It's nice to see him not play frustrated at this point. And we can see, we talk about body language. You can see his frustration at various moments through the season, but um, his mind is fairly free and clear at this point.